All right, and welcome everyone. Cellular Healing TV, episode 27. I'm the host of the show, Dr. David Arsarno, I always call him. And, uh, <laughs> and we have a really an amazing special guest today. Uh, I'll let Dr. Pompa do a formal introduction um, because they both, their heartbeat is cellular healing to sell, healing to sell to get people well. One of the most brilliant um, scientists and PhDs on, on this subject, Dr. Gary Samuelson. I can't even believe he came on the show today. We're so excited to have you. Dr. Pomp, we'll do a formal introduction for this World Changers. Well, yeah, thank you for being on, Dr. Samuelson. And uh, he is a, an atomic medical physicist. And I said at the seminar, if you remember, it sounds like a rocket scientist to me that does uh, things with medicine. <laughs> but um, actually, You've been burying yourself in new research, um, I don't know, you could tell us uh, for how many years, but your background is in nanotechnology, which led you into the subject of today, which is redox molecules. And every time I say to a patient or somebody, you know, redox molecules, it can, something contains redox molecules, um, I can tell I lose them with that word. So hopefully we can kind of break that down a little bit today and explain to our viewers why redox molecules can change their world, change their life, and why the older they get, the less they have, and why that's significant. So thank you for being on the show, Dr. Samuelson, and you know, bring us uh, the wisdom that you've gained over the years. Thank you very much, Dr. Pomp. I'm also a fan of your work and the, the good that you're doing for the people out there. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I do appreciate that. You know, we try to take some of the things that... Um, you uh, really, really smart people come up with and make it more simple and make it usable and bring it into the treatment world. You know, one thing that I have said now for the last few years, there seems to be a large gap of what's happening in the research world and what's happening in the treatment world. I mean, in the area of redox, in the area of epigenetics, bacteria, you know, there's some amazing things going on in research and I love to read the studies, I do, but yet I see this massive gap that there's doctors not doing this, and yet we have studies, you know, showing this amazing technologies and how it can change health and cells, and yet who's doing it? Nobody. That's my goal, Doc, is to bring what guys like you are studying and bringing to the world uh, into more of a treatment place and, you know, really to the people. So speak about that as we even start because, you know, there's some new stuff and it's exciting. Uh, thank you. Yeah, around the world there are about 5,000 articles being written every uh, year uh, on different medical technologies. It could just be game changers. It could be disruptive technologies uh, and would give us the tools that we need in order to address some of the biggest issues we have out there in health. And uh, they're not quite making it out to the people. And yeah. um, you know, it's a, it's kind of a sad thing. I don't know because the patent problems, uh, getting them all uh, sorted out, many other different uh, issues that uh, are that I have to deal with as a medical researcher. Uh, but some of these are just incredible technologies, uh, nanotechnologies, for example, that can go in and and identify tumors and ablate tumors, get rid of them. Uh, and this new technology, this redox signaling technology, the one that I've been working with for the last four years or five years, that seems to have uh, a fundamental, uh, very promising action in the body, and it and it's a, uh, it's kind of difficult to get it out there. So we had to uh, before, if I can tell you a little story about it, uh, we tried to get it out there through the regular pharmaceutical track. Uh, they came and they said, well, you know, if we're going to take it, we're going to distribute it, and you guys cannot distribute this uh, this uh, technology. And uh, that we told them, hey, but there are hundreds of people out there that are using this, and there are several that we're very concerned about, that they need, that they need this technology. And uh, they said, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, if you want to deal with us, you got to play the game uh, and cut off all distribution, we decided that we would not do that, so we started distributing this as a direct selling technique, a direct selling product, to get it out to the people that need it. To try to bridge that gap that you're talking about, 
Um, you know, it had been tested over 16 years to be absolutely safe, uh, absolutely zero toxicity. It's natural. It's they, these molecules are natively produced inside your body, and um, they can go. This uh, liquid can go in your eyes, ears, nose, your mucosal membranes, everything. There's there's absolutely no toxicity to it, and yet it, it has such a dramatic effect on the signaling properties and the speed of healing and uh, and other th uh, things in the body like the enhancement of antioxidants, etc. Uh, that are very beneficial in many cases to people who are undergoing challenges. So um, this is, uh, you know, uh, I'm seeing firsthand now how this new technology is getting out, manifest right now by the fact that we're sitting here talking about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, just to back up even a little bit, you know, redox, uh, you know, what is it? You know, I... I you know, I, I remember when I first started reading about it, you know, I, it obviously piqued my interest because of my study of the cell. You know, my saying is, if you don't fix the cell, you won't get well. And uh, obviously, we're on cellular healing TV here. Uh, so we believe strongly in the cell. But the more I read about it, the more I realized it was really involved. These redox molecules are involved in every pathway of the cell. I mean, every uh, functional pathway of a cell. You know, so kind of explain that to people because... When I say, well, you know, how can one thing be involved in so many pathways, whether it's hormones, how hormones connect into your cell, or whether it's even the production of ATP in the cell, you know, energy that makes you feel good. So kind of explain that. Well, these redox signaling molecules, as I call them, are the reactive oxygen species and other very reactive molecules that are produced by the mitochondria. And you have about 200 to 5,000 mitochondria in every cell in your body. And they're producing these uh, on a, on a large-scale basis. And um, before, we uh, used to think that these reactive oxygen species, which include free radicals and oxidants, have uh, a damaging effect. And we t would take antioxidants in order to um, try to get rid of them. But now, you know, in the last 10, 15 years, mostly in the last 10, we're starting to see these oxidants really have a fundamental role in the signaling of the system. When I talk, when I'm talking about fundamental role, let's look at look at look at plants, for example. <clears throat> uh, the photosynthetic process that's used in order to produce sugars is regulated by these molecules. Uh, when sun shines on a plant, it produces free radicals and um, uh, superoxides which produces hydrogen peroxide. This hydrogen peroxide interacts with the proteins. There are different thiols and things like thioredox in, in, inside of uh, plants that change shape when they come in contact with hydrogen peroxide. This slows down the, the, the um, photosynthesis. So a plant in direct sunlight is able to respond and uh, reduce its, its uh, pho photosynthetic output, which is very important for a plant. Uh, otherwise, it would burn out. Um, for us in our mitochondria, we have uh, metabolism. keeps us alive. Like you said, it produces ATP. It produces the energy we need to, to live. We also produce in that process um, these superoxides and hydrogen peroxide and other of these reactive oxygen species, which also prove to regulate our metabolism. <laughs> and I can't think of anything more important on a cellular level than the regulation of metabolism. It regulates everything in our cells, in all tissues of our body. Uh, for example, the production of insulin inside of our beta cells, in the, uh, uh, inside our pancreas produce insulin when there is an oxidative stress, which includes production of these uh, reactive oxygen species. And so you just go on and on and on, and there are literally hundreds and hundreds of pathways in the body that are regulated and directed by the uh, equilibrium or balance, the homeostatic balance of these oxidants and uh, reductants inside of our body. Yeah, and so I mean... And Simple terms, you know, we used to, when you make energy, you make uh, some type of waste, right? If we burn a fire, we can make smoke, we make heat, we make, uh, you know, 
good stuff, and then we make some bad stuff we have to get rid of. But you know, in the cell, I, I you know, we used to think that this what you talked about, this superoxide that is a byproduct. We thought it was just the smoke, right, of the fire, and it was something that we had to get rid of. You know, it's funny because the the body never wastes anything, does it? So now we've learned that not only this superoxide. Now, granted. Dr. Gary, you know, if superoxide builds up too much, that can create some problems, right? I mean, yeah. so there's this balance of the cell, right? So we need superoxide. Matter of fact, what you're saying is, hey, we've learned that how much we need this superoxide, this byproduct of making ATP, making energy. And we used to thought it was just a bad thing, but now we realize it has all these roles, you know, that we need it for. But yet, too much of it's not good. How does this balance occur in the cell? Because what I see, Gary, and this is this is again coming from more of uh, you know an actual treatment world, is that when people have an imbalance of this, they're sick. Meaning, they could go one way, they could go other. It seems like there's this imbalance of too much oxidation, perhaps too much reduction, or vice versa, or opposite. What keeps it all in this amazing balance? And, and talk a little bit about how the body even does that. Wow, we really wish that we knew all the answers on that one. Yeah. Uh, you know, th this is where the cutting edge research is, is, is how the body maintains a homeostatic balance and how it uh, utilizes these uh, signaling properties. You mentioned, uh, you know, smoke and fire. I like to make an analogy that's uh, simpler to think about. If you're sitting inside your house and all of a sudden you smell smoke, you know, what do you do? Uh, well, you certainly don't sit down and open the sports section. You, know? <laughs> you, you probably would uh, run around the house to try to see what's wrong. And if it, it can't be fixed, you'd probably get out of the house and uh, let the house burn down. The cells absolutely uh, do the same thing. When these oxidants start building up, they'll start stop everything they're doing normally and uh, try to fix the problem. It'll push the genetic buttons and switches in order to be able to fix that problem. If it can't fix the problem, then it will kill itself. It'll, it'll create, do uh, an apoptotic process, kill the cell, and then be replaced by healthy normal cells in the, uh, in the neighborhood. Now this is really important because if you get damaged cells, which really are, if you think about it, the key to every problem, every health problem that we have, getting rid of damaged cells, repairing or replacing them, absolutely important. It's actually healing on the cellular level. And, and this is this taking place in every part of in your body. Um, so the, uh, re these redox signaling molecules or the ROS or the oxidants serve as the key communicators. When the homeostatic balance gets out of, out of whack inside the cell, the cell will do everything it possibly can do to put that balance back into, in, into play. And um, th this, is, this is absolutely uh, essential then for all of the processes that uh, restore health in the body. One of the biggest examples for, uh, for you guys uh, would probably be the production of antioxidants. Um, you know, when a cell gets sick, uh, it needs to protect itself against the oxidants. So it releases, as part of this process, NRF2 or NRF2, which is, uh, goes into the nucleus and pushes the genetic buttons to produce more antioxidants mm -hmm. and to protect itself. Now, this NRF2 also helps open up the detoxification pathways in the gut to let out the toxins into into our intestines which is very important let it out into the kidneys NRF2 helps protect us in many ways all over the body from from these toxic insults as well as um, you know prime our body um, to heal itself and so it, it's pushing the buttons of, of leading to healing and, and protection and defense against toxins and insults. And uh, in the sense, it's letting these cells repair themselves, like you would try to repair your house if you had that sort of a thing, or take the cells down, kill them, kill the bad cells, and then um, 
uh, replace them. Uh, just think about it for a while, Dr. Pompa. What in the world else is there involved in healing? Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically what you've described, and, you know, some people think, oh, gosh, you know, just boring biochemistry here. But, uh, you know, Doc, what you described is, hey, a pathway that if we could fix that pathway, we could just about fix anything, right? <laughs> it's like it's the most fundamental pathway that the body uses uh, to not only survive but to be well and to feel well and to produce energy. You know, I, I know that, uh, you know, just the importance of these redox molecules, a lot of people focus on, you know, a pathway like glutathione, which we do, right? Sometimes we're trying to raise an intracellular glutathione, meaning glutathione in the cell, glutathione throughout the body. But glutathione really doesn't work without redox, correct? Uh-oh. <laughs> I think he's yeah, going to shades. Yeah, I think so. Get, get but, um, here. <laughs> uh, yeah, glutathione really uh, relies on this, this redox process in order to be able to work. And so, um, yeah, you're right. But it, re it relies on a balance, on this yeah. uh, equilibrium. And uh, we've seen in these uh, cell cultures that if we put these redox signaling molecules in the cell culture, the uh, production and eff efficacy of glutathione goes up. The efficacy actually goes up some 500% uh, on the average. And so it, it really helps provide the uh, reductants and the oxidants necessary for these um, for these molecules to work. The glutathione, superoxide dismutase, other antioxidants. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. I mean, you. I, I guess the bottom line is this. I I think right now is, you know, of a, a society we learned a lot about antioxidants. We got very excited and we started everybody started overloading on antioxidants and now we're realizing that there is another side you know to this there's a balance there's these redox molecules that really control this balance of <clears throat> we need oxidation uh, we need the fire in the cells so to speak uh, we need it for signaling um, you know and there's this really amazing balance that has to take place so you know again I, I think you're right I mean obviously we don't quite understand this amazing intelligence this homeostasis but we do know that redox molecules play an absolute amazing role in all these processes in some role in that balance the intelligence uses these molecules to activate things to deactivate things um, so am I right on that oh yeah it has so throughout the whole history of life on earth and every form of life that exists plants use this as their primary signaling mechanism and defense mechanism and repair and replace mechanism people, animals, every form of life on earth. So, you know, you couldn't be more <laughs> right in that. that right. regard. Well, I mean, let's let's bring it down to a level. And, uh, you know, David, uh, maybe you have some questions. Or Warren, you know, let's bring it yeah. down to now a level. We talked about the science, you know. Uh, maybe you and I are the only two people that got excited on this call, Dr. Samuelson. Um, so now well, let's bring it down to... Uh, well, I, I, I couldn't be more excited because yeah. there, there, well, yeah, there's two Dr. things. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Yeah, right. I just play one on Saturday Night Healing TV. Just putting the disclaimer out there. Yeah, um, exactly. I know. Yeah, but you don't count anymore. But we're talking about people who go, okay, great. What can this do for me? Okay. I mean, well, there's, 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 there's two two questions that that I hear quite often, and and hopefully you can address it. One is. What can this do for me? What does this do for me? And and you actually mentioned something when you spoke at the, the conference about uh, the number of metabolites that are shifted in the period of time. But then the second question is, how does this happen? With two, when people look at the bottle, they say the ingredients: sodium chloride, you know, salt and water. So how does this happen? Has this created? And then what does this do for me, for the listeners? Okay, well, we mentioned all these redox signaling molecules, and they're produced in mitochondria. The mitochondria have certain physical, chemical processes and catalytic processes that are that uses. We well, we use the same process outside the body in order to be able to take the salt water solution, oxidize it, and reduce it. That's where redox comes from, by the way, R E D O X. And in order to be able to form the, these compounds, these uh, these ROS compounds as well as the reductive uh, compounds, in uh, in a stable 
complex in a stable uh, form that can be taken or drink, drunk or, or placed in the body or whatever. So um, what happens, uh, uh, I guess, that would cause me to think, well, maybe I ought to think about this or consider this as part of my <laughs> regime, my health regime, is that during the uh, process of life, the mitochondria slow down. They become damaged, in fact, since they're the fireplaces of the cell, so to speak, and produce most of the smoke that we're talking about. They become damaged and uh, don't produce as many of these uh, signaling molecules as is necessary then to maintain a quick response for healing, for the immune system, etc. Well, these are now we're starting to get into some pretty important stuff: healing, immune, immune response. Uh, so if we were able to replace the molecules in our body, these redox signaling molecules that cause our body to be more efficient to heal itself, well, that's that's pretty big deal. Um, you know, at the very beginning, I, I thought, well, it wouldn't work. I don't think it'll work because they're just too reactive. And I'll, I'll tell this story. I tell it all the time. My, my wife's cutting vegetables, and she cut her finger and started to bleed. And I thought, okay, ha-ha. Now I get to see firsthand what will actually happen. I, I poured a little into a cup and said, honey, would you stick your finger in there? And uh, she stuck her finger in, and the bleeding stopped immediately. It was bleeding quite profusely. It was like a, a four-millimeter cut in depth. It was, it was quite deep. And uh, stopped immediately. The pain went away, and uh, I saw healing take place in seconds that normally takes minutes. It usually takes minute, uh, minutes for the body to detect the damage and start the healing process. It started immediately. In a couple of uh, hours, it completely had healed over and closed, and in a day, I couldn't even see it. So, so the thing is, you know, I saw before my very eyes... The, the, uh, this accelerated healing program that the body is capable of doing and uh, it, it uh, impressed the heck out of me and I, I, I said you know this is a significant technology uh, just imagine uh, the lives that we could save if we were able to make this available to people that was kind of my dream now at the, this point uh, to, to do that but uh, it works internally too so suppose you have a, a health challenge of some sort that involves a damaged cell. Now let's see, which one of those could I mention? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, there, there are a few of them that involve damaged cells. Imagine oh, wow. if the body was then enabled to be, uh, take care of that more efficiently, uh, meaning repairing and replacing the damage more efficiently. What could that mean? And so you start seeing the possibilities. Uh, some of the things we have, we weren't expecting, is the athletes use this now for recovery, and they do a fantastic job, you know, in recovering from marathons and Ironmen and all sorts of uh, very uh, damaging uh, types of activities for your body. They do great uh, things, and yeah, so we're seeing evidence of this along with the antioxidant uh, efficacy increases all over the place in, in all of our studies and, and uh, everywhere that we look also in uh, anecdotal evidence. So it, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, you know, Doug, that was one of the things that interests me, you know, when I tell my clients that, well, this is a product that I take, and they always say, well, why do you take it? You know, I mean, meaning that I thought, you know, Thought it was just for people who are sick, you know. It's like no, actually, one of the things that initially interested me in the product was the research done on athletes and how it raises VO2 max. Simply put, you can get the cell to produce more oxygen. <laughs> you can get the body to function, um, you know, at a much higher level, process oxygen much better, much higher, and uh, that's why the athletes take it. And you know, as soon as I started taking it, I, I noticed a massive difference. And of course you know, always the science in me wants to say, well, let me stop taking it. Let me take it. Let me not take it. And literally, I could tell a difference whether I took it or not. Uh, and here, you know, my son, who uh, often forgets to take it, my 16-year-old, um, I'm telling you, every time he takes it, 
before he goes to the gym, he says, gosh, did every time I take this, I can get out a few more reps, it seems like. I just feel such a difference. Absolutely. You know, you don't build up as much lactic acid. So, And uh, I'm sure the old man feels it, the benefits even more than the young man, but uh, even the fact that the young man feels it. I mean, the older we get, the more you said it, you know, there that, uh, you know, our cells produce less and less of these redox molecules, and so the more it can benefit us. And, you know, they even have, you mentioned about putting it on the outside, you know, there's redox molecules in actually a topical solution, and, you know, the company you've worked closely with, um, that was your latest project, correct? I mean, you, we've, you've developed and stabilized the oral product, which really they started, I think, doing IV with it at first, and then you worked on now this uh, outer product for the skin. Okay, yeah, the oral product uh, you can't use for IV, just to clarify no, that. No, no, okay, it wasn't there. originally. No, no, I'm saying that's where uh, originally they were yeah, used I, before. We were could, able to stabilize. The, I got you. You know, the, just to clarify, you know, we can't use it. Of, of course, we don't have a product like that. But the oral product um, it was so effective on the inside, um, but it isn't as wow or dramatic because on the inside, healing, you don't feel it. You know, you might feel it if you're doing athletic uh, type of activity. Hey, but what we, uh, what we did is we tried to find something that was compatible with this stuff because it, it breaks down so easily. It has reactive oxygen in there, and it, it'll break down very easily in the bottle if, we don't be, if we're not careful. So we, our, our manufacturing techniques and et cetera have to be almost t top of the line in order to be able to do this. But the um, gel that we have, we finally found uh, a, a kind of a gel. It's a clay derivative that will hold the liquid uh, without denaturing it. And so we, we put it, we now have this gel carrier and we put it in a gel carrier and you can put it on your body and your, on your face and we saw, uh, well, reduction in wrinkles, reduction in blotching, reduction in uh, all of these things and increase in elasticity, which is an amazing for me because, you know, that means the, the skin cells are producing more elastins, more collagen and uh, th things like that. Uh, damaged skin and damaged skin cells are very obvious. <laughs> and using the using the uh, gel then is a, is a way to show people demonstrably that it's working. And so um, you know, now that this they're using this gel, uh, almost everybody is flooding out pictures before and after of uh, you know how their skin health is increasing and and how the um, uh, how their appearances are getting better, et cetera. And so yeah, I, I, it, it is neat. Your, your skin's an organ, and we take, you know, I, look, I, I've seen absolute miracles with people taking this product orally and, you know, how it, just the shifts that occur at the cellular level and then therefore their health um, with autoimmune and so many different, you know, conditions. But the skin is an outer organ, like you said, and people start using it. Now they're seeing what's been happening on the inside. You know, I had these you know, age spots, these dark colored spots that uh, appeared over the last few years, you know, as I uh, quickly approached 50, which will be next year. And um, within the first month or two, as some took longer than others, they disappear. Yeah, so, I mean, I closely watched it. I mean, that was my, you know, little thing that, you know, let me see what this stuff does. And, yeah, I mean, it made an absolute amazing difference. So I had some sun-damaged spots, like just some, you know, areas on my arms. I mean, just absolutely changed it. So it's neat to watch redox happen on the outside. That's the, the outer uh, reflection of what's happening on the inside also. Well, the, the amazing thing that I've seen with this is imagine if it, if and, and the studies, and Dr. Gary, you can confirm it, um, you, it has a, re, a wrinkle reduction um, and all these other things that you talked about of 20% or more in less than 28 days. And, they, and if, if we start looking at it and say, wow, if our skin, which has been getting older and older and aging and aging, and we can sort of see right in front of our face a before and after photo in such a short period of time, just imagine what it does on the inside of the body. 
Well, you know what, David, that, that's the thing. People think, well, what's in this product? And I'm like, no, no, no. You have to understand this is the same technology. You're just seeing it here, what's happening on the inside. This is redox molecules. <laughs> All it is is just in, a, like you said, a gel that stabilizes it. Um, you know, and then you have the redox molecules, you know, in the, the liquid. And arguably, it does taste like pool water. Um, I always have to assure people it's not. Uh, that is the sodium chloride. There's no chlorine. Uh, there's a difference of chloride, chlorine. Uh, but anyway, so I, I've had many emails saying, I, I, I'm drinking chlorine. Is this good for me? <laughs> so, uh, I, always, I always try to explain it to people because I have a PCHEM, master's level PCHEM background. And I tried, oh, it's the carrier solution. Well, you have to have a certain salinity and temperature and pressure to stabilize molecules inside the, and they just shut down. But I, I don't know the easiest way to explain that. You know, it's, it's the carrier solution that keeps the, what's, what's being delivered to the cell state. I mean, I don't know what, how else to say it to them. And I just wanted to show you guys, I, um, here's, the, here's the water the, the, for the oral, and then here's the, the skin um, external um, product as well. You can spray this on your face and stuff, but um, Dr. Salmon said, I, when you develop the, 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 this, it, it absorbs better in the skin than even the spray, I imagine. I want to ask you this. I haven't been taking it for a week. I've been busy and just kind of like Dr. Pompa's son, just not taking it. And I noticed my restless leg coming back. So I'm like, immediately I thought, I forgot that it went away, of course, because I didn't do a symptom questionnaire before and after. And um, I took a bottle um, or two over the, just a, a packet over the last couple of days, and now it's gone again. I always wondered why that would be. I mean, obviously, you know, restless leg has a lot to do with methylation. Um, and things like that. So it was an interesting, uh, interesting find as well. Yeah, uh, things that are genetic or, or um, in that you're susceptible to. Uh, if you increase the efficiency of the of these cell responses, the cells uh, then start their. Even though it's a genetic, let, let's say for example, it's a deficiency in glutathione that you have. And this stuff then increases the efficacy of the glutathione that you have. Even if it's a genetic deficiency, you can actually uh, make some progress on it, you know. Or if it's a susceptibility due to other things that are happening in your body, uh, it, it kind of helps the cells to, to be able to repair and replace themselves more efficiently. And uh, you stop taking it, well, you lose, the, you lose that efficiency. <laughs> So you know your body. Your body, if you're susceptible or you have a genetic thing, will just return to its normal state. And uh, so you know, in in many cases, or especially in genetic cases, it, it's important that you keep on taking it um, in order to be able to maintain the same efficacy that you need uh, in order to get over it. I'm I'm back on the wagon. That's for sure. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. What you just, you know, talked a little bit about there, you know, epigenetics where we can turn genes on and off. We realize that so many symptoms or things that our bodies are expressing, whether it's good health or bad health. I always say that we're all on this call right now expressing from our DNA good things and bad things. You know, I know just from the use of the product uh, that it has a major effect on changing that gene expression. You know, there's these little switches in the cell that we know, you know, Warren talked about methylation. You know, mm -hmm. redox plays a role with methylation. And yeah. therefore, it plays a role in turning off those genes, turning on good genes, turning off bad genes. I've watched it. I've watched it clinically happen when people come on and off the product. And those quick changes that occur can only be explained with epigenetics or genes being turned on and off. Yeah, that's. Uh, I went to a conference this past weekend, and there were three PhDs in uh, in uh, redox biochemistry. There, we we sat down and we had a little bit of fun. We found we found, or they were teaching me actually what was happening inside uh, <laughs> with this product. Uh, I'm I'm uh, now cooking up with some pretty cool cool guys, and it's exactly what you say. The um, the switches inside your body, the ones that, for example, release this NERF2, uh, are very important uh, in these pathways. 
so, so for example, uh, you know, you have uh, inflammation in the gut. It turns turns off some of your uh, some of these pathways. You can use this to turn them back on and get the uh, get the toxicity going out of your gut, which is one of the mo the biggest uh, pathways for for toxicity for toxic elements to leave you, and uh, it also takes the burden off of your kidneys. And you can switch on some of these pathways that you said um, that. Uh, enable the the mitochondria and the metabolism to be more efficient and we've seen that in our human clinical trials uh, these uh, metabolites we looked at a uh, 260 some metabolites uh, people that took a SIA had shifts of over 60 of these metabolites and mostly toward more efficient energy utilization but it we saw clinically that these switches are being uh, turned on when you use a SIA. Now, there's so many of them that there's, it's impossible to know exactly, you know, to, to be able to say anything uh, about, you know, the exact pathways um, from the studies we've run. So we're going to have to be more, a lo lot more specific on which switches we're turning on and, and not. But it seems like they're the same switches that you would turn on if you were to exercise. So when you exercise, you create these re reactive oxygen species in your body, ROS. Uh, I just wanted to mention another researcher that is kind of getting on this horse now. His name's James Watson. Uh, he's the co-discoverer uh, of the helical structure of DNA. He now says that the most important research that he's doing is the uh, is reactive oxygen species, is the signaling process is redox medicine as they call it now and, and uh, he says that he uses exercise to turn on these genes well here we have not everyone can run three hours on a treadmill in order to do so right. uh, so now we have a substance that is able to turn on these switches without having to um, you know have uh, ex extensive exercise <clears throat> But, you know, Dr. Gary, what you just said is really important because, see, in my world, clinically, most of the people that are clients of mine, they cannot exercise because their cellular energy is so weak, it leaves them exhausted, right? That was me at one point. I couldn't exercise. I went from, you know, an expert cyclist who could, you know, get on my bike and pedal 100 miles like it's nothing to where I couldn't take a walk down the street without being left exhausted and uh, my insomnia would become worse because of the overreaction from my adrenal my adrenals because of my lack of cellular energy. Therefore, it was using cortisol and adrenaline to try to adapt to the the massive drop. Our number three is restoring cellular energy. And when we give what what I've seen is when I give these clients a SIA, you know, they get an absolute amazing effect. And one thing I t say about my in my five R's is R number three is oftentimes the first thing that I have to do to get everything else to work. Meaning that if their cellular energy seems to be so low, if we can just get some activation there, now it seems like everything else is working. So that production of ATP is pr the production of redox molecules. So it's been a really amazing for me to watch when we add a SIA, it is adding that spark, that fire that now it seems like now all of a sudden their methylation, the things I'm giving them over here are now able to work again. Um, just like the exercise would do. It, you know, exercise makes everything work a little better, producing more redox molecules during that process, more cellular energy. We can get the same thing accomplished with the ASEA and those who can't produce that type of energy. Yeah, good. Great. Yeah, clinically, it's neat when you hear that, uh, you know, when you hear that and then you pull it back into the clinical world and say, yeah, that applies absolutely clinically as well. I have a question, Dr. Gary. Um, oftentimes, I'll, people say, well, how do I know? And I say, I, I say, take the ASEA 90-day challenge because the people take it every single day for 90 days. Now, I do know that they you experience a metabolite shift. You experience things in your body almost immediately that people don't feel. Um, why is, I, in my mind, 90 days is a good number for people to, they're going to, they're going to, I haven't had anyone who's told me that they haven't felt something within 90 days. Either they're going to feel a positive reaction or they may get a little bit of 
a detox symptom, but everything's good because we at least know that it's working. What do you think about that 90-day uh, number as far as uh, people trying it? Yeah, we have about 100,000 people out there. I, I have my thumb on a few of them. Um, <laughs> I really enjoy this work, by the way. It, it's, I'm affecting more lives than I possibly could affect if I were into medical research or in almost any other field. So uh, we, we get to see the, hear the stories come back. And um, it seems like uh, about th after 30 days, maybe 30 or 40 percent of them have uh, felt something or has seen a difference. In about 60 days, 60 percent. In about 90 days, 90 percent. It's easy to remember. <laughs> but uh, it, it seems like after 90 days, almost 90 percent of the people have had some very positive experiences. First couple of day, uh, days that you take it, or maybe even up to a week, you might uh, get this detoxification thing going on. This is a, a normal thing that happens when we start to unblock these pathways, these detox pathways, yeah, especially in the gut. So the, uh, the athletes that were in our human clinical trials, <laughs> they'd come back to me and they'd say, you will not believe what's coming out of me. <laughs> and then some of the people that have been in, in the military and have had also some uh, challenges due to toxicity have had uh, really smelly sweat and uh, gray stuff coming out of their sweat and, uh, and, and other things happening that uh, start to indicate that, you know, the body's starting the, to open up these channels, these detox channels and pathways. So very important to getting the body clean. Well, the first week, uh, all of that stuff is dumping out and you can't expect, you know, it to happen um, immediately. So you might get some detox uh, symptoms. And, and then uh, after that, if you drink a lot of water, you also need to be able to hydrate and uh, um, have good nutrition when you're doing this. Because like I said, you know, it's kind of popping the body up to the level that you would if you exercise. Well, you need good nutrition, hydration when you exercise. When you start taking a SIA, the same thing. It washes out the toxins, helps it wash out the toxins, and also... Um, uh, helps the body to have the strength and the nutrients that it needs along with this to, to, to put things back in shape in order. So, you know, uh, I don't know if that helps at all, but th that's uh, kind of what I've seen it out there in the field. Yeah, you know, I've had uh, severe autoimmune clients of mine uh, just with literally drops of ASEA start detoxing. And they have to literally work their way up to full droppers to ounce, one ounce, two ounce, three, and work their way up that ladder. Uh, matter of fact, I would say most of the clients, you know, that um, I see, that's the case. You know, they, they literally have to work their way up because, again, they're very, very toxic, sick people. And when you get that cell working and open up those pathways um, at the cellular level, at the gut, you know, yeah, you're going to absolutely... Be, uh, create uh, some type of reaction. But listen, yeah, Dr. Gary, I love a product that, you know, no matter what, someone feels something. And one of the things I always say is if you're not feeling something on a SIA, just keep taking it. One way or another, you're going to feel something. You're like, wow, my brain works. My brain fog's gone. I feel more energy. Or, oh my gosh, I have a headache and loose stools. What's going on, right? Um, you know, and, and the nice thing about it, because it's a liquid, you can always find a dose that works for somebody. You know, you can just back up to where you don't have the symptom in three days, push forward again and see what your body does, you know, and, and eventually we're always able to raise people up. Um, and then there's those folks that just seem like they can take it and it seems like it's not doing anything. Explain that. I mean, it's meaning that they need a lot more. It's not until we hit eight, even 10, and I've had some people even 12 ounces and then bam, everything changes. Explain that. Well, everybody is, has a different uh, homeostatic balance inside them. You look at your hormones, for example, you need different levels of hormones inside each individual. You look at anything that's kept in, in balance by the body, and it, it keeps everything in relative balance, but not everybody's the same. Those are the same for these, these uh, redox signaling uh, carriers. Some people have a heck of a lot, and the body's used to it. Um, so you, in order to get over that hump, you have to give it a lot more. You have to kind of push it. So what I suggest is you, is you take a, a, what I call a spike, 
you know, take eight ounces twice a day, uh, 10 ounces twice a day, and see if that kind of puts you over the hump and you start seeing some something happen. Um, you know, I don't know if you have to keep up with that same level, you know, forever, but if you give it a spike, at least you can see where, uh, you know, where the threshold is. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what I have people do is try to find that threshold. And then, like you said, I mean, it's not like they have to stay at that level. I may keep it at a high level for a month or two, uh, and then we just start backing down. Their body, after that, seems to tell them what level they seem to function best at. You know, and again, it, it just seems like at certain levels, all the other, you know, treatments that this person is doing seems to work, you know, if they keep the redox at a certain level. So again, it's all about that cellular energy, I'm sure, you know, and really, you know, allowing these other pathways to function, you know. So therefore, people are always saying, gosh, you know, I'm doing a lot of things. It seems like nothing's really working. Yeah, you're, you're, you're probably lacking redox. <laughs> so um, there were that balance in the cell. Well, Dr. Gary, I know you have to go, and we are so grateful that you took time out for us and our listeners at Cellular Healing because uh, they know this is our passion. How do we talk about cellular healing without talking about the research that you've, you know, just poured yourself into, and you know, for most of your life, and uh, and just lately the redox. So thank you for all your research. You know, we would not be here if it wasn't for some of the research and discoveries that you have made. So we are so grateful for that. And I'll tell you, I have hundreds of clients out there that would love to thank you because of the difference that this one thing made in their life. So thank you so much for that. And I thank you for them as well. Thank you for helping my dream come true. Uh, Absolutely. You can see it in your eyes. You're so, so blessed and, and happy that you could do this for others. It's uh, all over your face, you know, and uh, you're like a giddy schoolboy all the time when you talk about this stuff. And I know true world changers and scientists that have been gifted something that you have, um, that you get to share that gift with the world. Um, and, and something like this, it, it is it is world changing. I really appreciate it, David. You have a little thing on your speaking of people, you know, wanting to try this product and, and yes. get to know Dr. Samuelson more. Um, you know, through some of his, um, he's done a lot of uh, recordings and things. Mm -hmm. Is this Redox on your webs? On your yeah, name there. right, Redox. right under my name. I just changed it. Uh, a link: uh, www.redox180. Um, Redox, R-E-D-O-X 180.com they can get some more information about this amazing product that you graciously have taken your time to talk about Redox signaling molecules and and really peeling back the layers in, in, a, in a deep level and then making it accessible for everyone so thank you so much for today this has been absolutely amazing and uh, we're honored to, to hear from you and, and have you share this with all of our listeners thank you Thanks, Dr. Gary. We'll uh, let you guys go. So you're hearing episode 27, uh, another world-changing uh, show. Heal the cell, get well, restore your life, share this message with the world. So the healing TV, um, so healing TV. Take care, guys. God bless. <laughs>